Well, thank you for your time today. Um, so I am Lawrence, I've been with the city uh, coming up on 12 years now. I can't believe I've been with the organization that long. I do want to prepare you because I don't think this presentation is nearly as entertaining as the last three. So I just want to set that, the, set the, let's set the bar pretty low. Um, so to begin with, I want to start with what we call our leadership system. And this leadership system really begins in the center here with our vision, mission, and values. Those vision and mission and values are really about how we operate. Our vision is to provide world-class municipal services through, a, um, through operational excellence and a culture of innovation. That really drives what we do. The values about how do we live those principles. And this is something that I think we started in 2006. It's not something we did once and put on a shelf. We revisit it periodically to make sure that it's fresh and reflects the current environment. Around that, uh, that center of the vision mission values, we have a number of key standardized processes that we have. When we were a younger organization, a smaller organization, we, were, we had a lot of autonomies where each department could really do things however they wanted. And as we've grown, we've realized there's a lot of inefficiencies with that. And to create those efficiencies and be more effective, there are places where a standardized, um, systematic approach to something is much more uh, beneficial for the broader organization even if it might be a takeaway for a department or a small area within your broader organization. So uh, the pieces I'm going to talk to you today on this leadership system are in the upper corner here, our strategic plan, uh, so our citywide strategic plan, and then um, measurement, uh, review, and analysis, how do we measure our performance of that strategic plan. So I'm going to give you this uh, framework that we use. I'll call it a, a strategic hierarchy and measurement framework. Um, at that top of the pyramid are what we call our outcomes. These are, um, are the, from the list is neighborhood livability and social health, economic health, environmental health, culture and uh, recreation, safe community, transportation, and high performing government. Of those seven outcomes, really all that is is a categorization of the various programs and services that we provide to the community, but all of our programs and services fit within those outcomes. At that middle layer, we have, we call it our strategic objective layer. The strategic objectives are those goals. What are we trying to accomplish over this five year horizon of our strategic plan? And for each of those strategic objectives, we tie measures to those to say, how are we going to demonstrate and monitor our performance in achieving those strategic objectives? And so those metrics are one lens that we use to judge performance. At the foundational level of this pyramid, we have our initiatives. Uh, we use a process called uh, BFO, or Budgeting for Outcomes, and that's how we create our budget for the various programs and services we'll provide to the community. So the other lens that we use in saying how are we doing in achieving our strategic plan is the programs and services that are tied to each of the strategic objectives. And so through what we fund in the budget, which I would say those are our commitments to our community, and the metrics we have tied to the strategic objectives, we measure our performance through both of those lenses. And that's really powerful. And what this also creates for us is that all the programs and services, so the people in our organization who are providing these services, we've created alignment all the way up through our strategic plan to those outcomes that mean most to our community. So I've told you about the structure that we have now. I'm going to shift gears and tell you about how we got there, because it has been quite a road for us. Uh, back in 2005, we implemented this budgeting for outcomes process. It was um, a very, uh, it was quite a departure from the old way that we used to do budgeting, which was uh, a few people behind closed doors. Um, making decisions without any transparency. Um, this is, Budgeting for Outcomes is all about transparency. And for our organization, it really was a catalyst for doing things differently. Um, and we talked that this, our whole journey, we believe, started back in 2005 when we implemented this. Part of the, uh, the aspect of Budgeting for Outcomes is these outcomes uh, that we have. And so we created those seven key outcomes that I, I listed off before. You can see at the top of the page those icons. This has become really helpful um, because, again, they're just categorizations of the programs and services that we provide. However, we are very consistent in their use. So they're consistent 
consistent in our strategic planning. They're consistent in our budgeting. They're consistent in reports to council. Through our organizational dialogue, we use this framework. Um, and so when people see these icons, they know that we're talking in, um, in this case, the one on the right-hand side with the bus, that that's going to be a conversation about transportation. But we have this foundational question. How do we know if we're being successful in achieving these strategic objectives and our strategic plan? Uh, ultimately, our outcomes. So in 2009, we created what we called a community scorecard. And there's a um, web address that you could click on uh, when you get these slides if you wanted to go and take a look at our 2011 version of that. Uh, this uh, document was our first attempt at publishing metrics, trying to be transparent uh, within the community. We had some things that worked well. Um, so it displayed current performance and our trends over time. Uh, it was also a very good marketing piece. It was small, it was glossy, it used data to help tell our story um, across these seven outcomes. So it was very helpful in that regard. But we had lots of opportunities. Of the 70 metrics in there, one had a target, right? So interesting to say how you're doing today and how you, that's trending over time, but where's your performance relative to where you want to be in those commitments that you're making? We also had very few benchmarks in there, very little comparable data. Uh, it was a manual process to build, and we only published it once a year because it was so manual, and so the data wasn't really timely either. A couple years later, uh, we took our foray into what we call our performance excellence journey. And we worked with the regional equivalent of National Malcolm Baldrige, which at the time was called Colorado Performance Excellence. Now the organization is multi-state and is called Rocky Mountain Performance Excellence. And this has been invaluable to our organization. The, um, the process is about creating an application under this Baldrige framework and um, submitting that depending on the evaluation of your application. You might receive a site visit where people will come on site, train examiners to ask you questions, uh, your entire organization. And whether you get an on-site visit or not, either way, you'll still get a feedback report which tells you some of the things that you're doing really well and where everybody flips to right away is what are our opportunities for improvement or the acronym OFI or OFI. Uh, and so that's the part for our organization, everyone jumps to the OFIs. And one of the things that um, our original OFI said is that although we did good stuff with performance measurement, we didn't have a systematic and enterprise-wide approach to how we use performance measurement. And that was spot on. Another OFI that we got a couple years later was that although we had lots of plans, we didn't have a true strategic plan to help guide our organization. Um, so we've had lots of OFIs, and there's been opportunities for us to say, what's important to our organization, and which ones do we want to try and make improvements on? From a performance metrics perspective, that feedback drove uh, the launch of our community dashboard. Uh, again, uh, the website is here. If you would um, go online, I'd like to take a look at that, but I'll uh, tell you what the structure is. Right now, this would be our landing page. So you see those seven outcomes on the left-hand side with those icons uh, for consistency of reporting. And then we've got a red, yellow, green indicator of that performance for the, last, for the most recent quarter. If you click on any one of those, you'll drill down to level two, which will show for that outcome, what are the five to seven metrics that we're using to determine our performance uh, in achieving that outcome. And then on any one of those metrics, you can drill down to a third level, which will give you the chart, the graph, the data, the analysis, and other contextual information about that performance metric. Uh, some things that worked really well with this is we involved our city council uh, from the beginning in this. And so uh, they were invested in the decisions of which uh, metrics we used on our community dashboard in its look and feel. And now our council, I think because they were involved in its creation and whenever we make changes to it, they're involved in that. This is a tool they actually, they'll use if they have a community meeting. Um, they can pull up their iPad uh, and get inf real time information. Uh, well, real time within a quarter. Uh, and uh, another aspect of it is that it allowed us um, for, uh, to show um, in one place, what is the overall performance, the health of the city of Fort Collins? Not our organization, but the community in which we live. 
And so we have metrics on there that we have a high impact of influencing, something like maybe voluntary code compliance. Um, but we also have metrics on there like our local unemployment rate. Okay, there's not really much we can do about our local unemployment rate. But we include it there because we think it's important for our residents and our businesses to know um, that information and for any residents or companies looking to potentially move to Fort Collins, all of that collective information is very helpful to them to understand really what is Fort Collins, how are we performing as a community. And so um, those things worked well, uh, but it was very manual. It took us three years to get to where we automated this. Uh, and the other thing is that um, having metrics is great, but what do you do with it, right? If you put it on a shelf, it's useless. So it's the organizational dialogue. And so we uh, attempted to have managing our reviews with um, our entire executive team, uh, about 30 department heads, so pretty expensive meeting. We would do this on a quarterly basis to review the most recent results. And what we heard was that it was not adding value. Uh, we took that feedback after a few uh, quarters going through this and said, all right, we're going to stop and we'll, we'll reboot. Um, take your feedback and come back with a different approach. So uh, the following year, a couple more things we implemented. Uh, we had our first citywide strategic plan. Again, this came out of an OP uh, from one of those feedback reports. The strategic plan was a five-year view looking at um, taking in lots of different inputs. So <coughs> I'm sure your organizations have lots of different plans. Uh, within Fort Collins, we've got master plans, and policy plans, and procedural plans, and all kinds of plans. It's like a big spaghetti diagram. But we didn't have a true strategic plan that looked at the entire city organization over a finite view of what can we accomplish in this view. So our strategic plan is something that we refresh every two years. And so we've got a rolling five-year view of the issues and opportunities facing our organization and our community. And the other thing that we did that year is for the first time that we uh, met, uh, in an automated way, linked performance metrics and the strategic objectives in that strategic plan with all of our budget requests uh, that we're hoping to get funded uh, by council as part of our budget process. Uh, again, website links are there if you want to check out those documents in more detail. Uh, some of the things that worked well for this, the strategic plan uh, had uh, the full involvement of our council. It started with, uh, included their priorities, as well as you know, community priorities from various engagement and outreach opportunities uh, that we make. Uh, and so, but their involvement uh, was key to make sure that the content was in line with their perspective. Um, but the other aspect is that, um, that uh, you know, it, we have the, um, the transparency uh, and the, uh, the opportunity for that strategic plan um, to really reflect and be a driver of what's going to be in our budget process as we look at that five-year view. The other aspect, as I mentioned, was um, it's powerful to tie metrics <coughs> and strategy into what you're funding and providing to the community. But again, lots of opportunities for learning. So the community dashboard, those 38 high-level metrics, that's what we were using initially to say our performance of achieving the strategic plan. That was really too high level. The connectivity there was quite amorphous. And so we needed to do something different there. Uh, and then the, the metrics that were included, it was good to have metrics associated with our budget, but they were really operational. And they gave us hundreds and hundreds of metrics, which is way too many to actually do anything effectively. So, uh, if you remember the organizational discussion that I mentioned uh, that we stopped doing as part of our community dashboard because that was not being effective. We implemented in 2015 what we call QSARs uh, to address that. QSAR being a quarterly service area review. Uh, so it's a review of the service area. It's done on a quarterly basis. No big surprise there. A service area is basically a, one of our executive directors who's in charge of a number of like departments. right? So that's an organizational structure. So we have these reviews. Uh, they are done uh, with the city manager, the deputy city manager, assistant deputy city manager, the CFO. So those four executives are always in attendance. And that is the service area that's being reviewed and their department heads. So it's a very audience appropriate discussion that means is meaningful to everybody who is in that dialogue. Um, the, uh, and then the other thing I mentioned about the, the content of it 
is we have three standing uh, agenda items. So we talk about safety, we talk about uh, performance metrics, and then we talk about uh, our financial operations. And then the fourth topic changes on a quarterly basis, and that's one of the operational issues that that service area really wants to highlight for our city manager and those other executives who are attending. Here's an example of one of our automated reports that comes out of it. On the left-hand side, you'll see the, the metric name. There's a small graph. So you can see a trend over time. Uh, then we've got the quarterly performance with a red, yellow, green indicator. And this being the analysis statement, I'm talking about the quarter's most recent performance. So some things that worked well was uh, this was a much more effective monthly review. So um, even though each of the service areas are being reviewed on a quarterly basis, these meetings are happening basically two a month for the city manager. I mean, this is a huge investment of time, um, but we're getting value out of this because it's a dialogue focused on the people who are in the room, and it's about organizational performance and about the organizational issues that may be experienced at the time. So as I mentioned, audience appropriate, and we were now able to, uh, we had a centralized data repository for all of our metrics, our strategic plan, our initiatives, all of that is in one place, which facilitates push button reporting. Uh, and that truly is push button reporting, which really is a huge time saver for us. Some opportunities, way too many metrics. Again, like I said, hundreds of metrics. We went and asked our department heads, okay, you've got this laundry list of metrics. Which one, they can't all be really important. Which ones are the most important? Well, let's call those your primary metrics. So we had the departments identify their primary metrics. That was better, because we could get through the conversation in the time allotted, but the, the metrics discussion didn't have context of why they were important. Uh, and so that was another learning opportunity that we had. So um, I mentioned it initially when I showed you that, py uh, that pyramid diagram. What we're doing is we're connecting our BFO initiatives, again, BFO being budgeting for outcomes, those programs and services we provide out to the community, with metrics to say how are we doing in achieving our strategic objectives. So we uh, have, last year we implemented what we call strategy MAPS. MAPS actually is an acronym for Measurement, Analysis, and Performance. And so these strategy MAP discussions uh, are now focused on outcomes. And so on our over a quarter, we will discuss every outcome. So in January, we discuss three outcomes. In February, we discuss another three outcomes. And in the third month of the quarter, we'll discuss our last outcome, high-performing government. And so if you think about that approach, we're discussing every metric that we have associated with our strategic plan. And we're discussing every program and service we fund in the budget that's associated with the strategic plan. We're looking at our performance through both of those lenses. And I'll tell you, one of the really exciting things for me is to see that people are getting it now. I mean, this has been quite a journey for us. Um, people didn't understand, well, why do we have to do metrics? This is just another have to do, right? And people didn't understand the, the dialogue and why we were having this. Now that we were talking about the strategic plan, the people understood the value of the strategic plan. You're good in communicating that. Now that we were linking metrics to that plan, and we were linking what we fund in the budget to that plan, light bulbs started going on. People were connecting those dots and saying, ah, I see the value now. I see why you're asking this. And it also took time for people to realize, it's like a gotcha. You're not going in there to get beat up. Just because something is red doesn't mean it's bad. It's about having that dialogue about performance, celebrating where we're doing really well, and then discussing where we need to get back on track. Um, so we have these discussions, and then another piece that we implemented that we didn't have previously is that if something's underperforming, meaning that it has a red or yellow, so that's a metric or any of our programs or services, it requires an action plan, a commitment of what you're going to do to get back on track um, for, uh, for your program or service. So uh, this has been uh, really helpful for us. Uh, we're excited about the organization. Here's a, a, a pictorial representation. So in this case, you probably can't read it, but in the upper corner, there's a little yellow. So yellow is the performance of this strategic objective. 6.2, improve traffic flow and benefit both individuals and the business community. We've got our metrics down the left-hand side with a red, yellow, green performance indicator. Uh, notice that the top one is gray. Um, that was a new measure because we don't say you're locked into these metrics. These are always evolving. And so if you come up with a better way of measuring something or a tweak to it, then absolutely, let's implement that to make it more effective 
not only for this dialogue, but much more importantly, for the value that your department gets out of that measure uh, and monitoring it. And then those action plans, notice this last one here, the third one down being red, here's the action plan of what we're gonna do to help get back on track. So uh, this also is very audience appropriate. It's our entire executive team with the owners of those metrics and the owners of each of those things that are funded. And so again, for we're reviewing, say, transportation, it will be all those transportation metrics by outcome or by strategic objective, and then the owners of those various transportation programs and services. Remember, I mentioned uh, one of the challenges we had or opportunities was that the metrics discussion was good, but it didn't have context. Now with the linkage to the strategic plan, we had context. We knew why we were measuring this. Um, and the value that it had in helping us know where we are in achieving our strategic plan. Uh, and it also um, tracks our performance in our commitments to the community. I fully anticipated that as we, when we went for our first quarter, most things would be green. And as we went through the year, we'd see a degradation of more yellow and then more red as we went through the year. And fascinatingly, I was wrong. Not nearly as many things went to yellow and red as we would have anticipated based on prior year's performances. But the reason is because we were watching it, right? It couldn't fall on the back burner because the executive team was going to have a discussion about it every quarter. You can't let that fall on the back burner. Um, so that was really powerful, too. That was actually an un unintended consequence, a good one, I would say, uh, that came out of this. But even though we're so excited about the performance of these uh, monthly reviews, we still have opportunities. Um, and one of which is making our metrics better. Better alignment of how we're measuring our strategic objectives um, and how we're defining each of those metrics. And the reason that the definition is really important is because one thing that we often struggle with is finding comparable data. And so in general in Fort Collins, we have a tendency of saying we're gonna measure something like this. Nobody in the world measures it like this. Um, we could modify how we measure it, and then we might have comparables. But that's another opportunity to we have as we, you know, I said we would talk about this performance excellence journey we've been on since 2011. Um, this journey, uh, we also have a journey, like a parallel journey on performance metrics. And for me, it's very exciting to see the growth and progress that we've made um, over a period of, say, five or six years where now, not every day, but there are days where I can walk down the hall and I can hear people talking about metrics. I'm like, what? That's pretty exciting for a geek like me. Um, so we're making progress, but we still have opportunities to get better. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is a running debate. I'm very much about transparency. And so I think we should just take these reports and post them to the web and let the community read them. There's another perspective that says, well, the, this is an internal management tool. Uh, and I get that perspective. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to where we come out as a compromise because I do think we invest in getting information through that public outreach about our strategic plan as well as what we fund in the budget. And I think it's important that we close the loop with the community and saying how is our performance of achieving those things. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take you back to grade school. If you remember getting A, B, C, D or an F uh, grade. OK, well, I'm going to give you a slightly different uh, convention. Uh, so if you're F, you're a newborn, you're really relying on everybody else around you. Uh, a D is an infant, uh, C is you're crawling, B is you're walking, and A is you're running. I want you to think about your organizations, whether you use performance metrics, whether you use strategic planning or not. What grade would you give your organization on how you evaluate your performance, right? It's a rhetorical question. But I think it's a powerful one to think about where you are. I'll tell you that in Fort Collins, sorry, uh, I would give ourselves a B. I think we've made a lot of progress, but I see the things that we can do going forward, which I'm excited about, um, that would get us to that running phase. So performance management, it's about the journey, not the destination. Uh, we did just uh, receive a national designation. Um, that was a nice to have. Absolutely, that was not our journey. Uh, we're very excited about the, the feedback that we've gotten from that. And we look at that and we're like, wow, oh, we got this designation. That was cool. But oh, look at all these things we have yet that we could improve on. And we're very excited about that. So our journey continues. A couple last takeaways. Um, if you don't, uh, you've got lots of plans. 
and so you can take that information as the basis of a strategic plan. You think about um, the, what time horizon would work for your organization. Those um, and the things that you need to accomplish, those might be the objectives you need to achieve. Think about how would you measure those and if you're being successful. What are the different programs and services that you're offering to help um, achieve the success of that strategic objective? And then lastly and most importantly, for your organization, what is the dialogue that would be most effective, right? So here it is, five easy steps. Actually, you know, when you think about it, I mean, look how many years it's taken us in Fort Collins. So uh, lastly, just get started. Know that it won't be perfect. And then use continuous improvement to make it better. And with that, I thank you.